Hello again. This is Math 2115 coming to you from the College of DuPage and the title of this lecture is Functions. To give you an example almost from a information technology or computer science area, a credit card numbers uh, consist of a whole bunch of digits and these describe uh, such things as uh, what kind of a card it is, uh, what is the bank routing number, and so on and so forth. They're charged here, but the last digit is special. It's called a check digit, and in this case it's a 7. And it's computed from the preceding digits, and they're used to identify certain uh, errors. Now, it's not really a security measure, but rather it's used to detect errors when people are inputting their credit card over the phone or having it transcribed improperly. So this is detecting an error when uh, you're ordering a product online, for example. And a common way of uh, doing this is using the LUN algorithm. It's named after an IBM fellow, and it was originally patented, but now it's in the public domain and is widely used. And the way it works is you take every digit before the last one and double it, and you add the digits that you have. So this will be 1, this will be 6, this will be 5. And then you sum the resulting digits to get 73. Now if the last digit of that sum is 0, then you uh, put 0 for the check digit. Otherwise, subtract the last digit from uh, 10 to get the check digit. So in this case, 10 minus 3, there's the 3, is 7. Uh, and you can check your card to see uh, if, in fact, they're using this algorithm, and they probably are. Now, uh, it does detect a bunch of common errors. So, for example, is if you make one digit mistake, like here, if you made a mistake in that digit, it will detect that, and the check digit will not match. Another common error is to um, transpose adjacent digits. So instead of writing 82, you write uh, 28. Now, this LUND algorithm will detect every transposition of adjacent digits except for transposing 90 and 09. Now, this is an example of something we're going to study in this chapter called a function. A function assigns to each member of a set exactly one element or the other. So, for example, the LUN algorithm assigns to each uh, integer, 10 or greater, uh, a single digit, that is the check digit. And so we have uh, this number is assigned a 7, and this number would be assigned a 4. So formally, we're going to define functions to be a particular kind of set of ordered pairs. Here's the definition. Let x and y be sets. A function f from x to y is a subset of the Cartesian product. You see we're building on their set theory, x times y, having the property that for every x in x, there is exactly one y in y, such that x, y is equal to, uh, x of y is in the function. We sometimes uh, denote the functions different ways, but sometimes we just say it's a function f from x to y. The set x, where you're coming from, the non-pointy end of the arrow is called the domain, and the set that you're going to, the y, is called the codomain of f. The set y, where uh, there is something being mapped to it under the function, is called the range, and the range is a subset of the codomain y. So another way, given a function uh, f from x to y, there is a unique element, exactly one y, in the codomain where x and y are there. This is often denoted as f of x in your math, and often you talk about y equals f of x uh, in your earlier math. You could also write here, x comma y is an element of the function f. Another way to visualize functions is to draw its graph. The graph of a function whose domain and codomain are subsets of the real number can be plotted in the xy plane, as you've done many times. So for example, here we say uh, y equals f of x is x squared is plotted here. 
Now you notice that um, you know this graph completely defines it as does this equation. Now there are things that aren't functions though because a set is not a function if the vertical line intersects it in two points. So here you see if the input is 1 you do not know whether the answer is 1 or 3 so that's not a function. Often functions or non-functions mappings are shown with arrows. Now here uh, what you have is you have a um, something that has 1 being mapped to A, 2 being mapped to B, and 3 being mapped to A. Now this is, um, there is exactly one arrow from each element uh, in X uh, to Y, but the code, but it is not, um, there is an element here that is not mapped. Up here you see that this is not a function because the 1 is being mapped to two things, A and B. And down here, uh, this is not a function uh, because you aren't having something from uh, 4 in the domain being mapped to anything. An important function in computer science and math is called the modulus operator, or sometimes abbreviated MOD. And here's the definition. If x is an integer and y is a positive integer, x mod y is the remainder that you get when x is divided by y. So for example, when 2 is divided into 6, the remainder is 0. When um, uh, 5 is divided by 1, the remainder is 0. When um, uh, 8 is divided by 12, it goes 0 times and there's 8 remainder. And when this big number is divided by 2, since this is an odd number, you know that you will have 1. Now here's actually a formula for the check digit calculated by the LUN algorithm. It can be written as 10 minus s mod 10, the whole thing taken, mod 10, where s is the sum of the digits in the intermediate step. And uh, so you um, uh, take the mod 10 of that, and then you subtract that from 10 if it is uh, bigger than that, and otherwise it is uh, going to be, um, it will be unnecessary to uh, subtract this if the number is not uh, uh, bigger than uh, 10. Also in computer science, we use things called hash functions. And this is used when we want to store something in a computer memory. And so we, uh, we will figure out what location we want to store it in the computer memory using a hash function. So it takes the data to be stored or retrieved and computes the first choice for the location of it. And so we're going to use the hash function. And suppose we wanted to store or retrieve just the number n. We're going to say n mod 11. Now that means we have 11 storage spaces. So when we say n mod 11, then uh, what will happen is we will divide 11 into the number and we'll take the remainder, which will be either 0 up through 10. And that gives us the location. And so what we do uh, when we are uh, storing these numbers, for example, they would be stored these ways. Because uh, when you look at 132, 132 is uh, 11 times uh, 12. So the remainder is 0. So it's stored in the 0 position. Now suppose we want to store 257 after we've done this. Well, 257, uh, whenever we uh, compute the hash function mod 11, uh, for that we get a remainder of 4. And so you say, oh, it should be stored there, but there's already something there. So we move to the next uh, available uh, location. And that's called a collusion uh, policy, but this is used to manage memory. It works well if the memory is not densely populated. Otherwise, it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, if collisions occur infrequently, and if when one does occur is resolved quickly, then it provides a very fast method for sharing and retrieving information. A personnel is often stored uh, by hashing an employee's identification number or a student identification number, as example. Another computer science function is uh, to generate uh, pseudo random numbers. Uh, and again, these aren't pseudo, these aren't really random numbers because there's a formula that generates them, but they look like random numbers. They're not truly random, and if you know the formula, you could figure out what the numbers were. Uh, the method usually used to generate these is called linear congruence method, 
And so what you're going to do, you will generate the uh, next number in the sequence of random numbers by multiplying a times x to the n minus, x n minus 1, the previous number, plus c. And you're going to do this with the mod function mod n. And so you will, uh, for example, here, if m was 11, a was 7, c was 5, and s was 3, uh, what you would do is uh, you would take 7 times 3 plus 5 mod 11. This is going to be 21 plus 5 is um, uh, 26, and 26 mod 11 is, uh, you divide by 11, you get 2, and the remainder is 4. Now, much effort has been invested in finding good values for linear congruence um, uh, formulas because um, a lot of simulations require some very uh, good random number streams. In practice, uh, some very big numbers are used. M in this formula, the mod, is this huge number. A is this, and C equals 0, and that will generate a sequence of this many numbers before repeating a value. That's pretty random. We also, in computer science and in math, define floor and ceiling functions. Uh, the uh, floor function rounds something down, and the ceiling function rounds something up. Formally, it's defined this way. The floor, and notice since we're rounding down, the feeder on the floor is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. The ceiling of x, which the feeder on the top, is the least integer greater than or equal to x. Again, rounding up and rounding down. This is what the graphs of these functions look like. Now we have different kinds of function. A function, f, is said to be one-to-one, -one, or sometimes the word injective is used, if, uh, if x1 and x2 are in x, then f of x1 equals f of x2, then x1 equals x2. What this is really saying is, if f of x1 and f of x2 are equal to each other, then x1 is equal to x2. Only one thing is mapped to these elements in the range. An equivalent way to say this is, if y is an element of range, there's exactly one element in the domain such that uh, y equals f of x. And uh, the, a way to prove something is not one-to-one -one is to provide a counterexample. Uh, because the amount of potential data is usually much larger than the available memory, hash functions are usually not one-to-one. -one. In other words, most hash functions do produce collisions. So here's an example of a um, uh, function that is one-to-one -one because uh, the, each of these elements goes to exactly one element in the range. This is not one-to-one. -one because both 1 and 3 are being mapped to A. If the range of a function is equal to its codomain, we say it's on to Y. And so we say a function F from X to Y is on to Y, or surjective if for every Y in Y, there exists an X in X, such that F of X equal Y. A function is not onto if there is some y such that for every x in x, um, f of x does not equal to y. In other words, y is a counterexample to the claim. A function that is both one to one and onto is called a bijection. And if a function is one to one and onto from x to y, then there is an inverse function, f inverse that uh, takes you back to uh, x. So for example, x would be mapped to y, and now we say uh, the inverse is going to take y back to x. That is called f inverse. We also talk about the composition of functions. If g is a function from x to y and f is a function from y to z, then you can talk about f composed with g of x. What this means is you're going to do the g of x first, and then you're going to have f operating on the g of x. I know you studied this previously in much of your math. Operators are also functions. A binary operator takes two elements from a set and maps it back to the set. This is a binary operator. 
So addition, for example, is a binary operator because I can take three on, on the integers because I can take three plus seven and get 10. So that's an example of a binary operator. We sometimes have unary operators as well uh, on a set, uh, and uh, that means there's only one element in X is assigned to another element in X. Uh, so for example, and so this is an example of that. It's a function going from X to X, and it's a unary operator because it's just one, not binary, where we had a cross product. Um, and here's some examples. If you talk about u being a universal set, if you talk about f of x equal x bar, then that's a unary operator. Uh, multiplying by minus 1 in uh, just uh, math uh, is another example of a unary operator. Uh, and in logic, negation is a unary operator. It's another statement. In closing, now more than ever. Time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now, more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. God bless you all.